Foot drop is the clinical diagnosis of a patient who is unable to dorsiflex or um, pick up the ankle uh, when walking and also uh, unable to bring your leg outward, your, your ankle outward, so the patient will roll the foot. They call a foot drop because literally the foot drops because you cannot physically pick up the ankle. They can range from a herniated disc in the spine, which compresses the nerve root at the very highest level, uh, it could come from even higher, from a, essentially a, a, a rare tumor in the brain or a tumor in the spinal cord. It can come from the sciatic nerve or the common perineal nerve branch of the sciatic nerve. When these nerves are either pinched, meaning compressed, or they're physically injured. They can occur from simple nerve compressions and sometimes it can occur from a ganglion cyst, which presses on the nerve somewhere along its pathway. Diabetes can increase the chance that the common perineal nerve itself, which is the nerve that goes to the foot, is compressed because diabetes can cause a nerve to swell. And when that common perineal nerve swells, it can get pinched right below the knee, on the outside of the knee, at a location called the fibular head. Frequently associated with the foot drop itself, patients will have numbness that goes specifically to the top of the foot. The numbness typically does not go to the sole of the foot if the compression or the foot drop is caused by the common perineal nerve itself. First, history is very important. Uh, one of the most common things that we uh, hear when a patient is diagnosed with a foot drop or comes in with the question of a foot drop is that they notice a difficulty walking and they actually physically hear them or the patient's loved ones who are in their home hear the patient flapping their foot, hitting the ground forcefully when the patient is unaware of it. They also notice that the patient tends to hike the leg up because if they don't hike the leg up when they walk, they'll simply trip and fall and catch their toes on door jams. And so patients will frequently give us a history of, I'm catching my foot when I cross a threshold, or I, I've fallen because I've caught my toe on the carpet edge. We will frequently order an MRI of the lumbar spine, again, looking at the spinal causes of these uh, problems. We are also will use uh, MRI of the pelvis, the sciatic nerve, and also the knee at times. Ultrasound can be very helpful uh, at times to follow the nerve, uh, the sciatic nerve, up and down from the buttock to the leg. EMG nerve conduction study uh, from a neurologist or electrophysiologist can be very helpful as this can point to a lesion in the spine versus a lesion in the buttock or leg or at the level of the knee. Physical exam obviously cannot be overemphasized uh, as a diagnostic tool. Um, the physical exam is very important, especially as a peripheral nerve surgeon, uh, in identifying potential areas of compression or where narrowing in that nerve where it may be pinched in the buttock at the sciatic nerve or at the level of the knee. Also, evaluation of a previous surgical incision from either hip replacement or knee replacement or something of that nature. Uh, a, a fractured femur, all of these are critically important in helping to identify the location of the nerve injury or nerve entrapment. The treatment for the foot drop is based on the diagnosis and where the nerve is pinched. When a nerve is pinched at the fibular head or at the outside of the knee, the common perineal nerve can no longer function well enough to pick the foot up to bring the foot outward and also provide sensation to the top of the foot. If a nerve is compressed, 
then we need to decompress that nerve. If a ganglion cyst or a lesion exists that's causing the compression of the common perineal nerve, then clearly these will need to be removed to take pressure off the nerve. The worst problem we face as a peripheral nerve specialist is the race against time. Once a foot drop occurs and paralysis occurs, we have about one year to possibly 18 months to get that function back. The most important thing I can say today is if someone has a foot drop and they've been diagnosed, they need to be referred to a specialist as soon as possible. And the recovery is all over the board, depending on what caused the foot drop, how severe the injury was. So really there is no hard and fast rule. If the nerve is pinched, foot drop can come back literally within minutes to hours after the operation. If the nerve is pinched for a prolonged period of time and is severely damaged, it may take months and also may never come back. We do have experience as a peripheral nerve surgeon treating many patients with uh, foot drop. It is probably one of the most common things that we do. Uh, we clearly um, would like to see those patients before they are completely paralyzed. So if someone is noticing a difficulty in their gait, they notice the foot slapping, but they still have motor function. They can still lift the foot slightly, though it's weak. We would urge those patients to contact us as soon as possible before the nerve completely dies off and the recovery can typically be much faster. If you're a patient who's had a foot drop uh, for a prolonged period of time, uh, then we certainly would still be happy to evaluate you to see if there's anything else that can be done from a peripheral nerve standpoint.